Alrighty. Howdy neighbors and welcome back to Heart Fragment. Last time Kay went missing and then we found him and then we got stabbed by Jasper and then we're alive. So lots of great things are happening right now. Heart Fragment. Oh, I forgot to check social media. Iris, this is your final day. Have you already made your decision? I fear that when you've made up your choice, things may go wrong. I'm gonna check social media. I don't know they're moving soon. I seriously can't believe it. Out of nowhere. We shall not run. We shall not hide. We shall comfort the beasts of uncertainty head on together. Princess Robin. I'm just so worried. I got them a pretty card to cheer them up. I wish I could come and give them a big ol' hug right now. But I'm sure their tummy hurts after all that. The least I could do is bring them their beloved plushie. God, I love Shannon. Genuine and inquisitive. Cool, cool. And then we're getting. Oh, we missed. We missed a whole bunch of these. Hmm. <clears throat> it's oriented and groggy. You blink a few times to clear the fog from your vision. Reach again. What's going on? Found you. Here again. Mm hmm. You sound less surprised this time. I was kind of hoping at least. My dad and I talked earlier about my mom having the power to share dreams. If what you say is true, and this is a real conversation, I'm having with the real Kay. At least I have a somewhat logical reason for it. I'm just looking for an excuse to tell myself that you're really here. It means me that much, I'm flattered. Don't tease me. Sorry, it just slips out naturally when I'm around you. Hey Iris, remember when I said I had a question for you? Of course, right before you went missing. I've been curious about it ever since. And I really regret that I pushed you away before I got the chance to hear you out. I don't know what came over me that night. I'll be yourself up for it. I can ask now, after all. What is it? Before I ask you, promise me that you'll answer honestly. I don't even know what the question is yet, but I'll try. Now, trying isn't good enough. Promise you'll answer honestly, please. I don't need to save for this. I promise. Thanks. The question then. Do you regret, re do you regret meeting me? Despite what a strangely heavy question that is, Kay still smiles. Why would you ask that? Just curious. I don't mind. Come on, you can be honest. No! No, 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 no. I could never regret that. You're my friend. Where on earth would I regret meeting you? I enjoy our time together. You. Thank you, Iris. I don't understand why you'd ask something like that. Wait, do you regret meeting me, is that it? No, no, no! God, absolutely not. I'm so, so, so happy we met. Sorry for being a downer there for a bit. But I regret it, don't regret it. I feel unsure one way or another. I'm really lucky to have been part of your life. Don't word it like that. You just sound like you're not part of my life anymore. You're still here, aren't you? You're frowning, aren't you? Ah, damn it. Sorry, didn't mean to make you sad. I won't be sad as long as you quit acting weird. You're here. It was just a dream, so... Why did you come back for real? I wonder, I... Crap. Seems like it's time for you to go. What, already? I'm gone. Can you do me a favor? Keep an eye for anything weird. Something that might be related to me in some way. Weird. Right. Last time you were here, there was an orange feather that you left. Yep, that sounds right on the money. You'll know it when you see it. That's what I assume, anyway. Why are you so cryptic? What are those feathers for? 
Who knows? Call it a hunch, maybe. But I'm so confused. Nothing makes sense right now. Oh, there he goes. You can't just appear in my dreams. Say some weird bullshit like that and disappear. Everybody keeps secrets from me. It's for Shannon and you. Oh, there he goes. You can so vaguely see his outline. So sad. What am I supposed to do if you keep secrets from me too? I'm supposed to be the one that gives me answers. Oh. <gasps> there he is. No matter how much you yell your thoughts to him, whether he hears it or not, Kate doesn't respond. I can already see that's the case, yet the words keep coming out. But someone's going on. He must have something. We wouldn't have brought it up in the first place. Oh, shoot. Did you get a K? I... I need you right now. Oh, tears. Question mark. Day number two. Every ounce of my body hurts. You lean back against your pillows, but a sudden knock at your door prevents you from getting... and from actually getting any more rest. Come in. Hey. Hey, it's you again. I know you don't want me here, but, well... You need to rock back and forth over there. You can come in. You point at the chair next to your bed, and he scurries over and sits down. <laughs> he moves like a scared animal. Look, uh, I'm sorry I was such a jerk last time you were here. Life blinks a surprise. I'm just glad you're feeling okay. I gotta ask. You can't possibly have just snuck out and randomly come across me. Your timing was too perfect, so be honest. How did you find me? How? Well... It's probably gonna sound crazy. I've had a lot of crazy recently. Try me. Alright, I guess. If it felt like something was calling to you... Calling? I guess so, maybe. That night, I felt like something was pulling me out, sorta. I don't know how to explain it without sounding like a weirdo. Then again, you already think I'm weird, probably, so I might as well just go ahead. It's like something was leading me to that spot. That's exactly like what I experienced. What sort of force have called- Oh my god, what sort of force would have called not just you, but Clive as well? Not to mention Jasper was there. Is Jasper pulled there too? Or was he the one pulling you? When you found me, was I alone? Yeah. What the heck happened to you? Well, the guy does seem harmless enough. He's left to save my life. Strange events that led him to you. Plus the way you met not long before that. Makes you feel wary. I mean, we're just talking to strangers at this point, so... Why not? This guy approached me all of a sudden and just, well, stabbed me. It's like I froze. And I couldn't get away from him. Maybe I was just really scared of something, but I couldn't bring myself to get out of there. Do you know who the guy was? I guess it's just natural to be curious about all this after you find someone stabbed, right? Apparently his name is Jasper. I don't know the whole story behind him. I don't know much at all. Now that Kay is gone, no one will be able to tell me the things I need to know. He stabbed me and that's pretty much it. No, um, I'm sorry. Does it hurt a lot? <laughs> Thanks, Clive. They must be giving me some really heavy medication through this IV, because it's more like a dull ache. I'm surprised I managed to live through that. The pain was blinding. I honestly thought I was going to die. I guess you didn't get hit in the fatal area. That's what the nurse said when I asked her. So someone called Jasper, huh? Why would someone want to stab you? For funsies? Hell if I know. You can't tell him anything else right now. How are you going? Can I visit again? Why not? How are we still in the common route? <laughs> you can come. 
Sure. I'll see you later then. Yeah, yeah. See Iris. Um. Iris! The party has arrived! It's me, I'm the party. Shannon, hi. Hey, I. Oh. It's you. You two know each other. It's the guy who told me you were in the hospital. Um. Thank you so much for bringing Iris here. You're a lifesaver for real. Um. My name is Shannon, by the way. Um. Super, super excited to meet another friend of Iris's. Wait, oh my god. You are okay, right? Who are you? When did you guys meet? I'm. You're not Kay. But oh my god, Iris, are you keeping a secret stash of friends hidden from me? I'm gonna go now. Goodbye. Thank you for being nice. <laughs> oh, thank you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Weird guy. He must be shy. Maybe he's just intimidated by your ability to talk a mile a minute. Hehe. <laughs> well, I'm grateful to him. I'm so glad you seem to be feeling a little better since yesterday. I'm tired, but I'll be fine. Look at this. You're more than just tired. Even if nothing fatal was hit, and the pain is numbed, you were indeed still stabbed. The pain is still nothing to be scoffed at. I'll be taking notes for you- Oh, I've been taking notes for you at school. I don't know if you'll end up needing the same notes at your new school, though. Thanks. I appreciate it. Will you feel close enough that I can come visit at least? Eventually, yeah. Things are just crazy right now. I don't want you to go. You better message me as often as possible and send me selfies. And if you make any new friends, you're not allowed to love more than me. You're always going to be my best friend, Shannon. I better be. It still hasn't really sunk in yet. It's gonna be weird without you around. I feel the same way. If you're able to... Oh. If you're able to next time I visit, we should walk through the hospital garden. Pass it on the way to your room and it's so pretty. I'd love that. Thanks for being here. Speaking of which, what day is it anyway? It's Thursday. And you're not at school. What? No, no. You're my best friend. Of course I'd come visit you no matter what. Hehe. <laughs> we'll get some rest then, Iris. See you again tomorrow, okay? You'd be... Oh, you'd like to be able to tell Shannon that she could stay a bit longer. Your drowsiness is settling in again. She reaches out and squeezes your hand the moment... Oh, for a moment before heading out. You lay back down on the hospital bed and pull a sheet over your nose, waiting for sleep to come again. Waiting for even a brief pause from your waking life. The most horrible part of the whole situation that you need to break from most is the current sensation you can't shrug off. Anxiety. Hmm? Even my phone alerts are freaking me out when they happen so suddenly. Pull yourself together, Iris. Just like to say goodnight. I will love you. Thanks, Shannon. I love you too. <laughs> Something so insignificant from as an alert from Shannon was enough to freak me out for a second. And that's the problem. Not the anxiety. To be expected after a traumatic event. But the potential for it to begin sneaking its way into non-threatening moments of your daily life if left unchecked. The thought of what happened, just the thought and nothing more, is already sickening enough. I like how the thoughts are in a different art style. I think that's cool. But like some cruel trick, your mind takes a step further, conjuring the image of that man into view. You didn't cry what happened, did you? At least you don't recall doing so. But in your mind, you can see, feel, Tears streaming down your cheek. Little mutant. Those insulting words that he said with a sneer were spoken after he greeted you. And now you can't recall what his words. What? Oh. And now. Oh, but now you can't recall what words he used for the greeting. Hi, hello, hey there. It doesn't exactly matter what word he used. You should feel frustrated. The part of his attack is now a blur. Clips by the fear little mutant drew out of you. Is it not enough to call you a mutant so spitefully? 
It will little you further. Little mutant. Little mutant. As though you're too pathetic to, cons or to consider an actual threat. Small nuisance. And I'm gonna be the one who... Hmm? The wolf from your dream. Starling Fangs. As a charming human transforms into a bloodthirsty antagonist from your beloved childhood fairy tale. Man from the store. It's just face staring down at you. It's dark. Street lamps hardly made his face visible to you, especially in the panic state that, en uh, that engulfed it all. But. Tom, a serious, charming, and well dressed man, had an air of prince like elegance. It was your sudden recollection of the dream, the first warning signs. Even though. He made no move to attack, and he spoke so politely, and. and why did my head feel so messed up? Waiting for even a brief pause from your waking life. Heart fragment! Iris, my darling. Yes, dear. Sweet Iris, it's time. Your journey will continue soon. Please, collect the fragments. I am drowning. There are so many dots. It hurts. You feel a strange sensation almost crashing through your body. It hurts. Be ripped apart. It just aches, as though one part of you is sinking, while another is being lifted up forcefully, being ripped, torn, shredded, over and over and over again. A few moments where the pain stops, like it's being reconstructed. Those parts ripped away are sewn together again. And then they rip apart once more. The pain is even worse than last time. Shattering, shattering, shattering. Colors? Shapes? I miss the murky fog. You feel yourself floating. A reprieve from the pain. Before you appear, what's this? They each carry a different sensation. One in particular seems to be calling to you. One in particular seems to be calling to you. Oh. Oh no! <laughs> Got the orange and red fragments. They seem to be. They seem to contrast each other. The way that makes you feel as though they don't belong together. The orange one feels excitable. The sense of longing to the shape. Calling out. Almost crying despite the happy sensation in the center. Why does it feel like the happiness is fake somehow? The red one feels like it's tainted by something. A stain is eating away at the shapes and to its core. It feels as if this one is suffocating. We hold on to them. Why not? That's the color of the feather. Fantasy fragments. Did I mess up? Because those were the K colors. K and Clive. You're in a car driving through the city and we have really intense music playing. No. No, 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 no. This is a dream again. How much traffic today? How to get home to Iris. Where's the person with the oh so familiar voice turns off the radio? Putting all the concentration into her driving. Your mother, on her way home from work. She must plagued you for so long. Every time you see it from a different viewpoint. Sometimes you're your mother herself, in the driver's seat, but unable to alter your actions in any way. Sometimes you're in the passenger seat, watching helplessness, she drives to her impending doom. Sometimes you're in a passing car, and only hear the sound of the crash. Sometimes, at the worst of times, with the driver who hits her. It seems you're floating next to the car this time, 
watching your mother inside. Call out to her. Oh, please be careful. Please don't. It's too late. She took ahead of her swerves into her lane. What the hell is he doing? Is he drunk? Is he stupid? He's trying to kill himself. What the hell? What the hell? What the hell? Impact. The truck hits. Friday. Fantasy Fragment Route. <laughs> Raise your body hurts. The pain medicine wearing off. Horrible dream. Just won't leave me alone, huh? We're having a nightmare. Hi, Clive! Oh! Don't shout. Clive, I might even sleep inside my bed. Not long. Just came in where your dad was talking to the nurse. I was smoking, so I stayed back. Do you something? No, I just came to visit. You said I could, right? I guess so. Oh, you're getting released today, huh? I am? Your dad was saying that to the nurse when I got here. You'll be moving soon or recovering at home for a while. No questions, huh? I'm just curious. <laughs> Look at his face! I thought maybe you'd want some company. If you'll be staying in Sandwood City for a bit. I can't say no to him. Look at the face. Why did I not save when I said I wanted to? Wait, how big am I with Clive? Eh. <laughs> am I supposed to write a tagline for my profile? What am I supposed to write? I'm Clive, I guess. Does that count? It sure does. Male, age 20. Do I have to write a bio as well? Um... When I was a kid, I ate about 25 marshmallow squares in one day. Didn't even get sick. I think about that a lot. Valid. What about Natalia? Natalia Winterfield. Three conspiracy theorists walk into a bar. You can't tell me, it's just a coincidence. Female, 21. Birthday, November 6th. Favorite color, crimson. That's a good color. Favorite animal, fox and crows. Favorite music, female vocalists. Favorite genre, psychology, favorite food, I'm not picky, favorite drink, cider. I hope those are useful pieces of information. Not really, because I'm not going after you. I'm gonna go after him. He's not here! Yeah, I guess we might be able to hang out sometime. That's... Ah, Keaton. You're still here? My name is Clive. Clive, right. Am I heading on out now? But... Okay. Bye, Iris. Clive hesitantly stands up and scurries out of the room. Every time he leaves, it looks like he's running away. Never mind that for now. Kid, glad to see you're up. I talked to the nurse and I got some good news. We're moving you to Lana's place today. Wait, you're serious? I'm not fully healed. I haven't been... I haven't even been up walking around yet. I'm in love with you. I want you moved out of the city as soon as possible. Don't worry. I picked up your pain medication prescription. The doctor gave you a note with instructions to give Lana on how to change his bandages. How's the pain? Is it still real bad? No, but... I'm we'll moving you to Lana as soon as possible. I don't feel comfortable with you sticking around here any longer than needed after what happened. I guess I'm going to Lana's... Oh, I guess I'm going to Lana. It's not all bad. We're a Thunder Small. You don't have to run into anyone you know there. Much safer than being in the city. Put yourself together then. Right now? I haven't even said goodbye to Shannon yet. Ain't time for that. I need to get you out of here. I'm not giving you even a second longer of a chance to get hurt. So we're going. Now. Okay. Quickly told- oh, you're quickly told to get yourself together. Your father leads you out of the room and down the hallway, using his arm as steady or to steady as you walk. There are other patients out and about, walking while holding onto the hospital's railing. You notice the sign that says you've walked 15 feet, serving as a guide for patients that are getting used to walking around for surgery. 
It would be nice to have gotten the chance to ease my way back into this, too. There's still quite a bit of pain. It's not nearly as bad as you thought it would be. In fact, the lack of pain is even a bit surprising. I'm sure it won't be too lonely without me. I'm just gonna be really disappointed that we didn't get to say goodbye to each other. Speaking of which, social media. Didn't do anything new. We're fine. <clears throat> that looks so serious. I was in such a rush to get me somewhere safe. So, do you really think I'll be safe from now on? Hmm. This kind of response is not reassuring. Oh no. It's also got truth. I can hope is for the best. I rather thought you would be safest with Alana if you aren't with me. I'm honoring her wishes. Why Alana though? I haven't seen her since I was a kid. You said I can't even tell her about the cause of all this. If Luan thought it, then oh, if Luan thought it, then I trust that well enough. Even without Lana knowing that she apparently was someone your mother confided in. They did seem really close. Someone she confided in, huh? Lana was still in her early twenties back then. Can't imagine Mum thinking she was the best confidant she could find. Oh. I will. I will. Nothing is different. I wish I was still alive, so I could ask her about all these things I don't understand. No, nothing is different. Your father has never been the type to talk much about his to talk much while driving. It may work to your advantage. This distraction would work as a perfect opportunity to finally read his heart. There's no way to tell what life will look like from now on. This might be the last chance I get in a long time. This. If your initial, initial hunch is correct, that blue is closer to bad and the red is closer to good, then that would mean... He's mostly green. A bit of red and blue. But it seems like for the most part, he's just an average sort of heart. There's nothing special about it. Or anything noteworthy. In a way, it would be nice to see that he was exceptionally pure heart. Or even an exceptionally bad one. Because then, it might be easier to decide if uh, what I should be feeling about that man. Go out your window. You notice that you'll be arriving soon. No, oh, she's a cutie pie. Oh, hey, it's you. Hi, Lana. Lana. <laughs> He's so cute. What the hell? <laughs> the short pink hairstyle she has now is a stark contrast to the long blue hair she had before, but it's still very her. So glad to see you, kiddo. You wouldn't believe how much I've missed you. You really missed me that much? Hell yeah, I did. You're my little partner in crime, right? There better be no crimes going on. Oh, there will only be crimes. <laughs> Lighten up, Gray. Just a joke. I'm really glad you made it here safe. You feeling okay? You look a little sore after your accident. But I'd say there's still a spark in your eyes, am I right? Go top. You bet. That's my kiddo. A trooper, this one. I'll leave you to get reacquainted then. Yeah, bye, get out of here. Yeah, just leave it to me from here. See you, Gray. Give me a sec to change. I haven't gotten out of my pajamas today. That seems to be Lana's, Lana's way of saying, I'll give you two some time alone. Lana's gone. Father catches your eye for a moment. He gives you a simple nod. Take care, kid. Yeah, I will. Is there something you want to say? 
He looks nervous. Listen, kid. You know I'm not the best with words. Figure it out. But I need to get this off my chest. Takes a deep breath, then reaches out and takes your, ha your hand in his. You nearly jump in surprise, but manage to compose yourself as he looks at you with determination in his expression. What is it? I'm... gonna miss you. I know I've been a god-awful father. Never was a good one. Probably never will be. All I'm able to do is wish you the best out there and hope that maybe, someday, things can get more normal between us. I've been a fool all these years. I tried to protect you by keeping my distance, only to end up hurting you instead. I regret so much. I... His voice cracks with genuine emotion. I've seen your father quite like this before. It's okay. What? I'll see you with confusion in response to those words. I said it's okay, Dad. I didn't get it before, but I do now. You were trying your best for me in your own way. I hated you for a long time, that's true. But now, I'm glad you're my father now that I know more. Thank you. Father's eyes widen in surprise as he takes in your words. You can't blame him. After everything, even you were shocked at what you just said. Iris. Thank you, too. Please stay safe out there. Look after yourself. Eat healthy meals when you can. I will not. Don't go talking to strangers. I will only talk to strangers. Look both ways before crossing the street. I will look straight ahead. Don't do that. <laughs> Father starts rambling off different words of advice. These are words you hear from a parent spoken to a young child. He tells you all the cliches at once, as if to make up for not telling them to you when you were a child. And all that other stuff. <laughs> he. He puts up the car door and gets inside. As he prays to drive away, he looks back at you one more time. It's as if the expression on his face says, I'll miss you, kid. Well, here it is. Your new home. Oh, Jesus, it's so pink. <laughs> I was looking at my thing. bright pink. <laughs> Don't forget. Last year in June. Cool. Put this away. It's the third time I've woken up like this tonight. Why is it worse than usual lately? The occasional nightmare was slowly building into an every night occurrence. Kid, what in God's name are you doing? Nothing. How do I get to sleep? Don't you have a test coming up tomorrow? What do you think I'm trying to do? Jeez. You having nightmares then? So let me go back to sleep. You don't need to come check on me like I'm some sort of baby. Fine then. Why does he have to speak to me in that patronizing tone every damn time? Don't ask me questions like that if you don't care about the answer. Stupid old man. She has anything. Get in my mouth without sounding like I'm criticizing that kid. What's wrong with you, Gray? Look around! Lana has, uh, was never a great housekeeper, so you're surprised to see it looking relatively... What? Lana has never been a great housekeeper, so you're surprised to see everything looking relatively and tidy. Okay. Come on, don't look at my place like that. You're gonna hurt my feelings. It's very colorful. Exactly what I'd expect from you. He's saying I'm not much of an adult than I was back then. Well, I like your earrings. I'm just using you. You're right. No home, no responsibilities. I refuse to become a boring old woman. You still have all those piercings you had back then. Hell yeah. Whoa, you got even more? 
Want me to show you to your room? Oh, right. It's upstairs. You're gonna be able to make it up. You can sleep downstairs for a while if you prefer. No, I'll be fine. Alright, this way. Your new room is on a higher floor. So don't go getting any ideas about sneaking out your window again, huh? I won't. Ta-da! Here it is. Looks like all my stuff has been moved here already. Even my laptop. I'm kinda shocked he let me have it with how cautious he's been. Not that it would turn on even if I wanted to. Stupid piece of junk. She ruffles my hair as, like she would as a kid. Eh, I'm not a baby anymore. You're still my kiddo though. Don't worry about a thing from here on out, alright? We're safe here. I don't know all the gory details about what happened. I'm sure you must be scared after all that. Stay inside at night, promise me? Yeah, I will. And I'm excited to be here. I really miss you. Aw, come on. You're gonna make me blush. But your stomach is still sore. Now I'll make something easy to eat. How about a fish stew? Ew. I guess that's okay. Alright. Okay, that one is ready. I know you're probably feeling nervous about being alone right now. But Parathon is a peaceful town. Run out the fresh air. It's a beautiful day. You're safe, I promise. Thanks. I really am safe, right? Is this what a feeling what they call PTSD? Thought of what happened, so my serious stomach twist. And you grab the pillow from your bed and squeeze it and calm you down. Speaking of pillows, it's your stuffed animal. Did your father forget to move it here? I could use a stuffed animal to hug right about now. Mission already. Even possible for someone like me to meet new friends. That's over your phone. Messaging Shannon would be okay, right? I am texting her immediately. Don't even. I don't think I won't. Text her. I should block my IP address first. No, I'm getting as paranoid as my dad. Hey, Shannon. It's me. Things got crazy here all of a sudden. I had to leave the hospital today. I'm sorry to have a chance to say goodbye. I hope you're alright. Iris, hey! I was wondering what the heck you were. I miss you already. By the way... Before I left, I went and stole your stuffy from the house. Wahaha! <laughs> I wanted to take him into the hospital, but I didn't have time. I'm keeping him hostage until you give me your new address. We'll meet up soon. I just need to figure out how to settle in over here. I'll come online more often, though, so that we can chat in the meantime. Yay! Sort of looking forward to it. XO, 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 love you so much. Gotta get some chores done, though. Bye! Test you soon. Take a look at the bedroom window. Really, it's a beautiful day. That's true. But after what happened... Okay, I'm safe. You trust yourself... Oh, you tell yourself those words in a voice more flat than you had intended. The way they came out was almost like you're chanting a spell to yourself. To relax, it's all gonna be fine. No one even knows I'm here. I've got start over in Parathon. I can make the best of this. You betcha you can. Lana, you startled me. Sorry about that. So you're no better than just pop out of nowhere. I'm sure you're still on edge after what happened, huh? Yeah, a bit. It's okay though, don't worry about it. I know what's up, Iris. You're in a new town, and some crazy shit has been going on in your life. I'd freak out too. It's okay to be scared. Denial. <laughs> I'll be fine. I don't want you to think you have to baby me or anything. Baby you. But you're still sweet little Iris, ain't you? 
Don't hold back your fear for my sake, bud. I can handle anything you put me through. Alright, let's get some need, okay? So, why did you move to Parathon? Shortly after we lost contact, I guess. What do you hear? Is that Parathon a type of town that usually attracts old people looking to settle down? I uh, know. I moved here to escape from myself in a way. Better press me on the matter. Yes. We're gonna be living with this fool. We gotta know. What do you want to escape? No, oh, what did you want to escape about yourself? None of it's your gaze. Her voice is in a barely audible whisper. Everything. Hmm? Really, she came across as happy in her life. Maybe you asking brought up something that she didn't want to think about anymore. Or was that really it? Was it just sadness, or was she hiding something? Lana wouldn't hide something from you without good reason, would she? No, she cares about you, but... I need to confirm this for myself. I feel a bit guilty repaying Lana for opening up her home if I invaded her privacy like this, but... No, I just feel guilty about. Like Kay said, this power can help me survive if it comes down to it. Mmm. Got some purples. It doesn't look like there's any real malice or bad intent. She seems to have a pretty average heart. Sorry, I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. Sorry about that. I'll be alright. I'm just glad that you and I got to meet again. I never thought I'd see you after you left. I kept waiting for you to call me at Dad's or something. And when you never came, I gave up hope that we'd ever see each other again, to be honest. Sorry about that, I really am. But now I'm here to stay. I'll be in your life as long as you want me. Oh, as long as you want me, kiddo. Just leave your worries behind and count on good old Lana. Hard fragment. Keep it with my boy. Check your social media feed before bed? Yes. Miss you, bestie. Trying to keep myself occupied with hopeful thoughts of a potential new season of Princess Robin. What do we know for sure? Are the leaks true? Come on, I need to know. Hey. What's... Oh. What's this you're saying about a new season? Oh my god. Literally, you're my savior right now. You're an angel. Yeah, so there are potential leaks that suggest a new season might be announced soon. I'm so excited! OMG! If it ends up not being true, I'm gonna die. There's that drama queen side that you're showing off again. Nah, uh drama princess. Don't forget it. I've been sad thinking about you not even being in the same city as me anymore. I know you're not a Princess Robin fan. So, you were just trying to keep me busy on a brighter topic, right? Wow. You're feeling pretty sentimental tonight. I guess I'm too, though. Good night. Sleep well. Hearts. Now you curl up under the covers of the bed in your new room and close your eyes. You can only keep them closed for a moment before you realize you're far too restless to sleep. The thought that I've been building up for a while now seem to be plaguing your mind, all of them assaulting you at once. There's just no way I can keep living my life normally. It's impossible. I've been stabbed. How can I just go on with my life? Not just your life was- oh, not that your life was perfect before. But even all that normal, when you really think about it. This is different. This is worse. How do victims usually deal with this sort of thing? They're people probably, right? What do you think of it? Despite everything that happened to you, you didn't get visited by any therapist or even police while at the hospital. Were well, your thoughts always this loud and intrusive? If you can, Kay, please let me talk to you again. Yeah! <laughs> the blocks if you sleep fades 
a way to reveal scenery that you've come associated with one thing. I'm here again, does that mean? Iris! Kay! You're here, I'm so glad. Hello. I'm so here, silly. As long as I'm able to get through to you, I'm gonna keep appearing here in your dreams. It's been really rough recently, so having you here it means a lot to me. I was kind of worried I scared you off after my outburst last time. <laughs> nah, take more than that to get rid of me. I'm really sorry about how I spoke to you. I just lost it for a minute. Everything that's been happening kind of spilled out and I took it out on you. I know it isn't your fault you're not here. Aw, Iris, it's okay. I understand. It's a lot. Don't apologize to me for having feelings. Everyone does. I know. I apologize for that. I'm just apologizing for taking it out on you. I don't think that's it. I don't feel like you're allowed to show your emotions to people without being a burden, right, Iris? Of course you'd end up blowing up when you bottle everything that you feel inside like that. I hate how easily you read me. Like an open book around you. Because I can't relate, that's all. Hmm? <laughs> forget it, forget it. The scenery surrounding you is blurry. Kay sits down on the sandy beach and gestures for you to come join him. He feels so close, he's so far away at the same time. Why? Is this a dream where you can't touch him? But if that's the reason, that doesn't make sense. I never made much physical contact with Kay, even when he was here in person. That aside, touching him is such a realistic dreamscape, really, po really impossible. He's here. He's here. But he's not at the same time. I fully understand it. There's something about the feel of his skin makes you feel less alone. If it's a dream, he's tangible, real. What did you do that for? So I just want to test it. Otaris, you startled me. Wait, that's right. This is a dream in you. That's so cool. I wonder why, though. Here is a physical. So it doesn't make logical sense. But it's kind of nice anyway. This is part of the dream sharing power that my dad mentioned, too. So this is how your father learned about mutants. He knew that, and loved your mother, but still left. So that engulfs the hazy looking beach. This dreamy, unreal place is safe. It's peaceful and Kay is here. What finally pulls you out of the quiet soul is the glance you make toward Kay. I think I'm feeling relaxed. Kay's hands. They're shaking. Are you alright? Yeah. Of course, what do you ask? You're shaking a lot. Sorry. You pointed out, Kay makes a visible effort to stop. Even though he smiles, you still notice a light tremor that continues in his hands. I wish I could do more, that's all. More of what? Protecting you. He takes his knees up to his chest and hugs his legs. Kay is already a short, small boy. When he's curled up, he looks even smaller. Fragile. I don't need you to protect me, Kay. What? I don't mean that I don't want- I don't need or want you around, don't get me wrong. It's more like I don't want you to feel obligated to protect me and save me. We can just be friends without all of that, you know? Thanks, Iris. I hope we meet again soon. You're leaving again? I don't forget like last time, but of course you'll visit me when you're able to, alright? I do promise. In the meantime, if you get a chance, go to the Parathon Beach. The real one, I mean. I won't say you have to do it, but if you can, please. Just take a look around there, for my sake. I'm really sorry. I don't have any information I can give you, aside from a dumb hunch. I'll take a look. Bye, Kay. Here you see his lips moving, as he, from his blurred figure, but as he fades away, the words are lost. Saturday, fantasy, fantasy fragment route. With that, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. So thank you very much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you later.